But it's like this uh, Brian Eno quote, which I don't really remember, but it's like they were talking about sequencers and it was like, oh, it's so, someone said it was bad with sequencers and he was, no, it's not. It's now, now you don't need to be like a virtuoso anymore to make music. You just mm-hmm. need to have the right imagination. I think that's the case with this as well. Like you don't need to know how to play violin. You need to be able to put together a good that data set. Hello from the island of Tenerife where I'm currently recording this intro on my laptop and why this might sound a bit different to previous episodes. On today's show I talk with Nicholas Dahlqvist, a Stockholm based composer who has been experimenting with coding and machine learning tools in audio and video creation for the past few years. In this conversation Nicholas shares his perspectives on the artistic uses of AI, his journey in using code as a music making tool or instrument and the scene for showcasing AI music in Stockholm and in a broader sense. This episode is an insight into contemporary methods of composition, transitions from traditional forms of music making and experimenting with technology in the pursuit of creativity rather than to make oneself more hireable. One last thing, the music you're hearing in the background right now was composed by Nicholas from the album Ambient and released on Stockholm label Calcatraz cassettes. I encourage you to check it out and support Nicholas and Calcatraz on Bandcamp. Welcome to the 99 Projects podcast, a weekly show that deep dives into creative and enterprising projects. Each week we'll uncover the people and stories behind intriguing ventures and discuss the results, outcomes and lessons learned. You can find more information and sign up to our newsletter on our website, 99projectpodcast.com. Enjoy the show. Do you mind introducing yourself? Yes, uh, my name is uh, Niklas Dahlqvist and I'm a composer currently studying at uh, the Royal Academy of Music in Stockholm. How did you get into programming AI? Was it the connection to music that made you interested to see how AI could be used or an existing interest before? I didn't. I learned about, I didn't know how to program before I started my bachelor's uh, four years ago or when that was. But then uh, Matthias Peterson uh, showed me Soup Glider mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, okay, because that's a, it's a very nice language. And I mean, for me, it was because because I had had this idea that like, oh, you need to have very expensive synthesizers to make electroacoustic music. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't isn't real. And then it was like, oh, OK, maybe you don't need to buy stuff. Maybe you can just uh, sit at home with your computer and like write stuff. And mm-hmm. it, it's nice. So that was my way into programming. And I started with AI because I was really interested in uh, voice synthesis. Uh, and I, I don't know if you're f- familiar with uh, traditional voice synthesis techniques. Um, I studied acoustics, so yeah. probably a little bit, but maybe. But feel free to. Oh no, they're it's, they're not very good. It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like you have formant synthesis, uh, which synthesizes vowels, which is kind of okay. But it's like consonants is like really really hard, and I mm. I tried like I searched the internet, tried to find a way to make consonants and, and uh, I didn't, couldn't make it work, which is still strange to me. But uh, anyway, uh, so then I stumbled across uh, like uh, text-to-speech uh, uh, voice synthesis, which is uh, like uh, wavenet driven from, mm. from the beginning. Mm. Uh, and then uh, I yeah, yeah, you can make, you can trade this on anything, any audio. So that that's the, I think that's the way mm. I got into it. I did a piece also with uh, Theo Cantro, so it's, just think that that my, was my first AI piece. It was really basic, it was in Super Collider and it was just like a neural network uh, learning how to play the drums for <laughs> five minutes and uh, yeah mm-hmm. and then it was over but it was you know you were using uh super collider mm. um did that make you go into like learning python or any yeah other yeah because well? because uh i mean super collider is is great for a lot of stuff but it's not great for machine learning 
Uh, and then it was like, okay, I really tried to to use Superglider because I was like, this is the only language I know. I don't <laughs> want to le- learn a new one. But uh, but then it was like it came to a point where it was uh, I need to learn Python if I'm gonna do this because it's uh, it's just way easier. Do you work today with programming in other ways outside of music and video, or is it purely just to to make? Music. No, it's it's purely t- like uh, artistic uh, mm. program. I I think I'm I'm not a very good programmer. I I I don't think I they would hire me <laughs> at the real. Uh, I'm like a baby programmer. I just uh, steal stuff from people and modify it and like yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think all programmers are kind of like that. Yeah, like, I, it's I, all about I guess Stack Overflow. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. True. But no, so it's only for artistic things. Mm. What skills or knowledge would you say is essential or helpful when blending these different technologies to figure out how to make music or video with technology like coding and things? I I think this is going to be such a like uh, grandma answer, (laughs) but it's I think it's just the, the only skill you need is like patience. Because it takes fucking forever to do stuff, and you need to be like be able to see past that. Oh no, this takes like two days to render this uh, file. Mm. You need to be like, oh, that's that's fine. I can do something else. Because mm. if you if you don't have that, then it. I mean, it's it's gonna get better and it's gonna get faster. But right now, it's still so slow. And is that like because of your laptop or equipment, or is it just like how it is? No, that's just how it is. I mean, like, Dolly is uh, quick now. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, the Dolly 1 was not very quick. And, mm. uh, and I mean, audio, because when you synthesize audio, you synthesize, like, every sample. So if you have a sample of, as a sample rate of 44,100, then you need to synthesize that many samples per second of the uh, audio track. And mm. that... T- I mean that takes a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they're they're coming some which are faster. The ear camera is the the rave model, like yeah, I think it was this spring or something, which is way faster. But mm. that it's also not as good, I think, because it's. I think they use some kind of spectral modeling synthesis technique combined with. With, uh, like uh, I, th- I think I I'm I'm now I'm talking shit because I haven't I I started reading their paper but I <laughs> I I started doing something else there. but uh, I think uh, and it sounds like that also that they like tweaking the pyramids of a spectral modeling synthesis algorithm with the neural network rather than like generating in the waveform domain which you do mm. with like the WaveNet and sampler and and the uh, box and those. How does the application of AI change the process of music or filmmaking in your experience? I used to work with like more traditional algorithmic composition before. Mm. And I mean, there's some obvious like similarities between them. Like you build a system and then you put something into the system and then it spits out something. Mm. But I mean, this is uh, when you're working with AI, it feels like you take it one step further. I mean, the amount of control that you have over the the algorithm just gets uh, less. Mm. So I think that's that's the way. That's the most. It's it's like you're working with samples that don't uh, exist in a way because you like and and I, for me that's. I think it would be hard for me now to like sit by a piano I have never sat by a piano and written a piece but you yeah, I understand it would be hard for me now to be like la de di do a la da di no la do you know because yeah, yeah. now I've gotten so used to it like you get suggestions and then you're like this one is nice mm-hmm. let's uh, loop that and then we layer it with this thing which is nice so it's mm-hmm. almost like you take someone else's material and like arrange it yeah. rather than like composing or did you work with music before? Like, were you creating normal music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I played in the bands and stuff and did the whole that thing, you know, mm. playing guitar and uh, saxophone and like, nye, nye, nye. but mm. uh, yeah, so so I, I used to do that. Uh, 
And also when I before I went to KMH, I did like more like pieces that were like this is a piece that I have written. Mm-hmm. But then when I was introduced to Superglider, it was such so nice to be able to like do something that's not fixated. Mm-hmm. Like generative music is is very relieving. <laughs> To do relieving mm. is the wrong word, but you understand. Satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's more about like that. It sounds in in a way, but not in a specific way, mm. kind of. Which is liberating was the word. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. Um, do you see yourself like going back to traditional forms of music making, or would you say this is it, this sort of like sparked off a new direction? You see yourself exploring this. I see myself exploring this for a while more. Mm. I, that, that that I do, but I mean, it wouldn't be strange. But I mean, at some point you're gonna get sick of this, and mm. then probably you wanna. No, I need to write it with a mm. pen now because it's uh, <laughs> you know you wanna go the other way because yeah, you, yeah. you yeah. But yeah, but this also, the thing with AI is it's there's always there's always new algorithms. There's always new stuff to do like. Now, for now, like I showed you when I came in, now I started with the simulation things, and I mean, that's just that is like you can work with that for three years mm. easy and, and do a lot of stuff. Is there anyone working with AI and music or film that you're particularly inspired by or were inspired by when picking this up? No, not really, because I wasn't really, I didn't have any, uh, I didn't have that much, uh, you know. I didn't know the scene really, like the AI scene, and now now I know the scene, like mm. the people that did it before me, but I didn't know them, so for me it was very much uh, fumbling in the dark. But but Holly Herndon obviously does mm. a lot of great stuff with it, like she's uh, maybe the poster child of <laughs> electronic music in AI, mm. uh, and also Hexorcismo does a great lot of great stuff. Yes, Hexorcismo. Okay. He's a, like a Mexican guy who okay. does great stuff with AI. And like a lot of like uh, uh, style gam visuals and uh, mm. like music stuff. Yeah, but no, I don't know. But then we, yeah, we like we, we are some people in the, like the field king and scene who does mm. it. So then you mostly get inspired by those people like yeah, in yeah. the very small and specific <laughs> Like scene. the Stockholm scene. So yeah, like, yeah, I think so. Is there a lot of people in Stockholm working with this type of like music making? And AI? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, or maybe. I, I mean, I only know of the ones who I know. Mm. <laughs> but they're not maybe so much. Maybe 10, 10 people that I know of. Mm. of but there's, of course, there's more that I just don't know of. Yeah. Maybe they're not at Phil King, but they're like. Yeah, 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 but they're at home doing yeah, weird yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do people showcase this type of collaboration between tech and art or music, both in Stockholm and? in a more broad sense. Are there any specific internet or real world galleries that specialize in sharing this type of creative work? I think like Fact Magazine has a gallery. I, I, I don't think it's like dedicated to AI art, but I think they have like, or I've seen, maybe I'm talking shit now, but I, I think I've seen that they have done a lot of like uh, visual AI stuff there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I, I can only speak for the Stockholm, for Stockholm, but I mean, it's filking <laughs> as, yeah. as everything yeah, yeah. that's uh, like experimental music. Mm. And, uh, but yeah, but I've, I've seen actually on, um, was someone at Mejan and I don't know him or her, I don't remember, but uh, they did something with, uh, like a video piece with AI recently, mm. I think. And there was also this guy, I don't remember his name also, but he had done like, he had had data sets of like Garfield and mm. uh, made really nice uh, uh, prints with uh, AI Garfield. I think he used Stylegun and uh, did. And he just it in a gallery in uh, here somewhere, I think. Mm. That was okay. nice. Yeah, it seems to be like things popping up. There was an AI exhibition at Photographiska, which is like a mm. photography museum in Stockholm. And then some smaller galleries doing exhibitions with AI-generated 
artwork. Yeah, but I mean, it's popping up. I, I, it's fun to see how people use it, and it's fun because people tend to like. I mean, it's maybe that's not so strange, but people tend to gra- gravitate towards like the same um, questions mm. in the beginning. It's like everyone I know is, or a lot of people have like, what? Where does this? put me in like um, agency and uh, where how am I related to this uh, artwork and yeah, stuff yeah. like that I mean it's a natural question I, I well, me included did, does that or did that how would you like to see this sort of progress in the future if you could imagine how AI generated artwork could exist kind of differently than normal artwork yeah I think I mean obviously it has a huge potential for like generative art because uh, it is generative and then it, you, it can be like because um, I mean that's the thing that I like with it that it's like it's always changing and you can hopefully soon when it gets better you can like have not fixated works mm. in a sense uh, but I I hope that it doesn't get and it's gonna get that and it's already on the way but uh, so streamlined and like, because uh, there was like a time when there was a time it was like one year ago, <laughs> but <laughs> but it it used to be very like a free free and strange area because no one really knew what to do with it. And it was like maybe you do this with it, mm. as well. no, and maybe you do this and like gee gee gee. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's starting to get more and more like. Uh, company driven and by like you have this API clients then, then you pay tokens so you mm. can generate and I would like to go the other way mm. <laughs> that yeah. it's like open source thing uh, everything's available and you just do stuff with it yeah uh, I don't know if that answered your question but yeah no definitely and I was also thinking about like how you know with filking in and sort mm. of how people show the work do you see it coexisting with the traditional forms of concept spaces or art galleries and things or do you see like another type of no no i think i think it should really should coexist because i mean it's really just uh, another form of it Mm. i mean it's not because that's the thing people tend to think that it's like this is an alien art form Mm. kind of and i mean it's not (laughs) it's just a statistical model that predicts stuff Mm. Uh, and yeah so i I really think it can and should coexist and i mean at filking in it does Uh, i mean there are several members who work with uh, ai Mm. to some extent in contrast to what you were just talking about ai is becoming more accessible in many ways and more talked about and more Mm. mainstream but i guess as well it's sort of becoming commercialized at the same time um what interests you most about the accelerating accessibility or understanding of ai and how that applies to art music or film i think it's nice that it's getting more accessible because i mean it has been really hard to do it and and that's nice i'm just uh, against the the big big tech uh, thing Mm. Uh, but uh, no what I mean it's the I say this uh, every time someone asks something but but it's like this uh, Brian Eno quote which I don't really remember but it's like they were talking about sequencers and it was like oh it's so someone said it was bad with sequencers and he was no it's not it's now now you don't need to be like a virtuoso anymore to make music you just Mm. need to have the right imagination I think that's the case with this as well like you don't need to know how to play violin you need to be able to put together a good that data set and mm. hyper permits and i mean that's very dem- democratic democratic yeah yeah democratizing the, so you say that demo- in english demo- democratic your, sweet, your yeah. english is messing with my english yeah <laughs> democratizing yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah and i think that's a really nice thing because i mean Obviously, there's a lot of people who aren't like born into families where you play instruments, but maybe want to, and then you can. I mean, it just opens up for a whole new type of person to make art. Mm-hmm. I think, which is nice. Next, 
Nicholas discusses the accessibility and inclusivity of being able to experiment with AI tools, ethical issues with AI and music creation, how he sees himself working with AI in the future, and also advice or suggestions on how to get started with code-based music making. What might prevent people from experimenting with AI in music and film? And is there a way to make this type of thing even more accessible or inclusive? Uh, yeah, but for one, it's it's the fucking uh, like token based thing. I hate that. It's mm. so annoying. Mm. Uh, and also like that they don't. Uh, I mean, they don't really open source the code as in the same extent as they used to. A lot mm. of this, uh, which is. Uh, bad i think because if you have it open source then you can make like a hug in space uh, thing or a collab and i mean a collab can be complex if you never have collab but a hug in space thing is not complex at all it's just like push the button and then something happens so yeah i think open sourcing <laughs> it's the way to go mm. also now i yeah i just remember it asked earlier what like what type of formats AI art should be presented in mm. and I don't mean it should be exclusively exclusively presented in that format but I really like uh, internet art mm. and I think it's a very good uh, place like a very good technique for it because then you can like have it running uh, in real time and you can have this like uh, real time really generated pieces mm. uh, accessible for everyone and not like you don't need to go to a specific gallery or yeah, something. Yeah. Not location specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can tune in wherever. Yeah, 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 I think it's very, it's very nice. Uh, Carl Johannes Jondell uh, is one who got me into that stuff, and also Joel Jansson. Uh, but uh, yeah, Carl Johannes did a really nice. Uh, he's a diabetic, and he did a <laughs> he did a thing called Radio Diabetes, mm. where you. Um, where you sent in your blood values and then he sonified them and it's a very nice website. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. Is it still running? Or? Yeah, I think he had to take it down some months ago because it was too expensive to have it running. Yeah, right, but yeah, yeah. yeah, but it was very nice. What other types of ethical issues do you think will arise from the use of AI in art and creation in general? I mean, one thing is the thing that's already happening right now with uh, on this. I didn't know the platform, but you know where they source a lot of the art for the date sets mm. on uh, Mid Journey, I think it was. Mm. Uh, I mean, and that's, uh, I understand that thing. I mean, it gets, it must be feel strange, and I can understand that. Uh, and also, I mean, it's still the deep fake thing is still fucking weird uh, <laughs> that you can like really deep fake your voice and make mm. using a Nazi song. I mean, that's obviously something with that that's problematic. Mm. Yeah, and also like it's, it can be, yeah. But I mean, I think it depends so much what you, what I mean, if, of course, if you want to be a dick with the technology, then you can. I mean, you can keep making James Brown songs even though he's dead and maybe you shouldn't do that. But mm. I mean, if you, you can do a lot of bad things with it. Yeah, the technology. But yeah, I mean, you can do that with a MacBook also. But yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think people see the negative sides of AI because it's so easy to say that this new thing is doing harm mm. when really it's just a new tool that is used in a certain way, and people are going to use any tool in a good way and also in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's uh, sometimes it feels a lot like because you know you see these clips of like. Uh, I know we had dance bands there then in Sweden when the, the disc jockey started playing and all the like uh, dance band you know mm. the yeah the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're like playing uh, like dance tunes it was like they they they're gonna this they're gonna disappear and it's so horrible and gaga ga, and you mm. laugh at that but I mean that's where we are now it's yeah, the yeah. same thing with the, the like the difference is that you can actually use this to like build a drone that uh, kills people so I mean mm. it's obviously more dangerous than DJing but I mean it's the same type of debate that is right now I think. How do you stay up to date on the latest developments and advancements in AI if at all? I mean you can't really do that because it's I mean it's happened so much uh, I was saying that to one of the persons who I was 
doing the film with that Phil King. Uh, that that like because he was like uh, he asked me something about that algorithm and I was like you should check GitHub because it's probably something new and it is something new and better out already. And we, mm-hmm. I mean, we did that film three months ago or four, mm-hmm. <laughs> four months ago. It's like crazy fast. Uh, uh, so, so no, if I think it's uh, hard to, I mean, I tend to like, I find an algorithm that sounds nice or looks nice. And then I use that until it's like, I've done what I can do that is fun with it and then I start looking for something else yeah. uh, but the, and the nice thing about that is that's because it's been many times that I'm like oh I, need, I would really like an algorithm that can do this specific thing mm. and but, and then you just wait three months and then that algorithm exists I just had that uh, like very recently I, I needed an algorithm that could make a 3D model from a single image input mm. and I was like fuck why does this not exist and uh, then like Three months later, I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's nice. I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. But I mean, I mean I've talked to my brother about it, actually. I'm wondering, it's because, I mean, it, it's talking about that it, there should be some plateau at some point. Uh, and you keep wondering when you're going to hit that plateau. Because, yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things that, I mean, like video synthesis isn't good yet. And mm-hmm. I mean, that... Same audio synthesis isn't good yet either, but I mean, yeah, they should eat it sometime, and you wonder where it goes. <laughs> yeah, the line. Yeah, I mean, people probably thought AI hit a peak in the eighties or whenever, mm. like the second wave of mm. AI, and then it died off, and then yeah. came back even stronger. And now it's like, where does this end? Like, yeah. it's, it's just gonna get more and more interesting and extensive yeah awesome. and and i think it now it's back to the question like what people should do with it or i don't remember the question exactly but like do do like weird stuff with it that's the thing because people i mean i see so much on my youtube it's like here's five ways to make money with chat keep tea yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah that's okay you can do that but like don't do that like Try to do something fucking nice with it, mm. not like because uh, I don't, I haven't watched it, but I don't really understand how you're gonna make money with chat mm. Maybe like uh, write uh, YouTube videos <laughs> or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my friend uh, uh, Nils, who's uh, working with film, he it was just such a nice way he used uh, Dolly. That I, f- I thought was like, yeah, this is how you should use Dolly because he is making a movie, and then instead of like, I mean, going around and uh, finding perfect places to shoot and blah blah, blah he they like they generated like a mood board with uh, the AI, and it was like maybe this scene can look something like this, and maybe this structure could look like this, and then they like use that and put it together, which I thought was a very like. Uh, nice way to use it mm. actually is this a path you intend to explore further like maybe beyond music and creativity where do you see yourself working with ai in the next year and beyond oh also but yeah but i, I mean i see myself working with uh, like video and uh, music in one year mm. but do you mean like beyond that yeah, do you see yourself applying this in other ways or is that not something you're thinking about at the moment? Uh, I mean, I, sometimes I think about that and, and I have I have helped um, Adele and my, my girlfriend uh, like with some like transcribing things and mm. stuff because that's nice. And uh, every time I do that, it's like, oh, this yes, the, you can use that in a way that's actually useful. <laughs> that's yeah. nice. But I mean, I'm not, I think it's other people do that better than me because I'm not... Uh, such a good uh, programmer yeah. <laughs> i think yeah. so i think the yeah i think i should keep to uh, this <laughs> like st- yeah, yeah 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 i think so do you have any advice or suggestions on how people can experiment with this sort of stuff themselves how would you iterate your journey looking back the code thing is of course it's uh, like e people get scared of mm-hmm. that but I think or for me, it's like uh, people are built in different ways. But for me, it's not very important to know exactly what every bit of the code does or how uh, Python works as a language. 
And I think that makes it very much easier to experiment with because if you don't need to understand how Python works, you just need it as a tool, then you can much easier be like, okay, maybe I don't understand everything in this notebook, but mm. if I run the cell, it works, and then you sort of learn along the way. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was a tip, <laughs> but you do have some, like, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to nothing's gonna break mm. it's like just try it and uh, mm. i mean if it doesn't work it doesn't work then you need to go into stack overflow and search but yeah. i mean nothing breaks mm. yeah i think it's people are scared of coding because it it doesn't make sense to a lot of people and no. yeah though that that just typing something can create actions yeah i mean that's it is strange i mean yeah. it is magic because yeah. i mean it's fucking weird but mm. yeah <laughs> No, because I, and also I was scared of coding before I coded, mm. obviously, because, like, he said, no, I can't do that. This is if uh, I go, 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 go. But, yeah, well, I mean, nothing breaks. You, it's, you can break your computer, but then you need to try really hard. But, yeah, I, I know that feeling. You can press enter a hundred mm. times, and it's just going to try and do it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, and then it's just going to throw an error message at mm -hmm. you. And, you yeah, that's, that's the worst thing that can happen. And mm. especially if you work in... Maybe that's a tip actually to work in the collab environment mm. or something similar because there's a lot of them now. Like Jupyter notebooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you like nothing can break because you're not working on your own computer. What was the biggest hurdle for you, sort of learning all this stuff? How would you approach learning this in a different way, like looking back? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I mean, because I think I approached it in the only way I can approach things. Because, I mean, I'm I'm not a very good, like, learner. I mean, like, some people like to, like... I need I like to understand how things work, and I don't like to understand how things work. Mm. Uh, so the only thing f I can do is, like, I want to do this thing. How do I make it do this thing? I mm. can't, like... So and, and that's the way I approached it, and I don't think I could have approached it in any wide way but I mean the smart way to do it is to like go to a like night class of Python and like learn how it works mm -hmm. from the beginning and uh, that's the smart way mm -hmm. but but that doesn't work for me yeah because I've it's so boring to like write this little exercise like mm -hmm. like if g -g 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 I mean, that's, world, that's, and yeah, yeah 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 I mean that who care I mm -hmm. if it I for me it needs to like be something that you can use mm. for it to be funny yeah yeah it's like going to music lessons i guess like you you don't yeah, need yeah, to yeah, go yeah. to music lessons to be a good musician no no and i i did that and i didn't like it i mean i'd never practiced i I hated practicing scales and mm. stuff because it was like what's i and i understand that you i mean if you do that then you get really good at your instrument but it's not it's not fun to do and mm. I think I'm a very it's hard to do something that's not fun for me because mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm a pig no but <laughs> <laughs> all right so you mentioned a few people and uh, things that were interesting to you do you have any recommendations for cool things to check out if you're interested in this or alternatively interesting tools people can use to experiment with oh yeah Kaiser Bloom is, uh, Kai Blum is releasing, uh, I think, uh, she said she was, she was going to release it soon, mm. but I don't know when. But with the music that she's done, uh, partly with AI, which is really, really good. And also Valerie Mool, I, I don't know if she, but she's doing, uh, she she was doing at least a project with part also with where she used AI, which I haven't heard anything of it uh, of the actual music, but it mm. uh, she <laughs> she described it and it sounded really nice. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and Holly Herndon obviously, and also Dada bots I think are quite funny. Do you have you do you know? Dada bots. Yeah, they're like oh. two. I think they're American two like American hackers who just do like really stupid stuff with AI. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, you should. It's. I mean, they they had this like uh, their claim to fame was like a twenty four hour live stream of AI doom metal or something, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like really nice. Uh, but yeah, but tools, tools. It's. Um, I mean, for audio, Sampler N I think is very nice, uh, which is an algorithm, and uh, I think that's my favorite one. But also like uh, the rave thing, because then you, that 
you can actually use that inside of Max or Soup Collider, which is very convenient. And it also generates some CPU, uh, so you can do it on your like laptop. Mm. And it's, so that's nice. I mean, I use the Tats also yeah. for video, uh, but I don't think it works anymore because I think they updated it in some way. But it's a really nice uh, unconditional uh, video algorithm, mm. which is obviously a lot of like video algorithms tend to be like prompt based like you write stuff and like gigi and i think it's more way funnier uh, funnier uh, way more fun with um, uh, unsupervised stuff that you just like throw stuff at it and it like spits out something mm. and you're like okay Roll my face. yeah 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 i think that's nice and also jukebox of course is i like, probably like the objectively best algorithm for generating music mm. right now where can people find you or check out your stuff uh i i released uh, a cassette on uh, calcatras this uh, autumn like in november or something mm. uh, so that you can find that on uh, bandcamp it's called ambient but ai so that's very <laughs> clever <laughs> <Genius>. <laughs> but you can also go to my webpage niklasdalqvist.net then you can look at uh, other stuff I had done with AI, which is I did a web page, which was nice. Mm. All right, nice one, man. I uh, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this conversation on audio and video composition using AI with Nicholas Dahlqvist. You can find Nicholas on his website, nicholasdahlqvist.net, or on Bandcamp. If you're in Stockholm, you may also catch him playing at Filkingen in the near future. All the important links can be found in the show notes. We have also summarized a lot of the key points and resources on the blog post for this episode. If you're enjoying this podcast, feel free to subscribe wherever you're tuning in from. You can also leave questions or suggestions via the contact form on our website, 99projectpodcast.com. The 99 Projects podcast was produced, edited and mixed by David Richardson and music by Jen Erickson and Nicholas Dahlqvist. We'll be back next Tuesday with our guest, Dan Omar, who discusses how he created and developed the AI business consultant program. See you then.